How's it going guys? It's been three weeks since the last 10 minute tutorial and we have a really cool one today. So today we're gonna to be making this render right here. It's inspired by a really cool piece of art by an artist named Raw and Rendered. I will link him in the top line of the description. He's super cool. Uh, but yes, it's really cool. We're gonna be making some really cool stuff here in geometry nodes, really simple, but very effective design. Um, in the 10 minute tutorial series, the whole goal of it is to show you that you can make really cool art within a 10 minute span, sometimes a little bit over, sometimes a little bit under, um, but it doesn't take very long to make very, very cool things. So with that being said, I do want to announce that my spring sale just started. So use the code D3Spring on Blender Market. I'll link that in the description. You can get real time materials, my animation course and my shading course, all of that 25% off. Check it out, link in the description. Now let's get into this tutorial. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and hit Shift A and bring in a plane. Now I'm currently using 3.4.1. I am not using 3.5 because it's a little buggy. So once they get that corrective release, we can uh, we can use it, but everything's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and head over to geometry nodes. I'm gonna click new. We're gonna delete the input and we're gonna go ahead and get a grid. It's funny they call it a grid and not a plane which is technically a plane, but it's also a grid at the same time. So I don't know, maybe they want it to be different, who knows? So here we go. I'm gonna to go to the wireframe view right up here and I'm gonna get a couple of vertices, something like this. And then we are gonna throw a dual mesh node on here, but the problem is it won't work with quads. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get a triangulate. So we're gonna type in triangulate in the search, shift A search triangulate. Now it's going to do that. Now that we have triangles, we can go ahead and get a dual mesh, which gives us this really cool pattern. And then you can go ahead and bring up your subdivision. What I'm gonna do now is get in a separate geometry. We're gonna switch it over here to face and we're gonna get a random value. We'll plug that, we'll go here to Boolean, plug value into selection, and that's gonna cut them up a little bit. And you can use your probability to see how much you want it to be cut up. I just want a little bit of uh, face variety. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and now we can go to uh, the flat view and let's get a mesh to curve and a curve to mesh. And we need to get a curve circle. Let's get a curve circle and plug that into profile curve and we're going to do 0 0.015. And now we have this. Let's go ahead and get a join geometry so, so we can add in our other instances. So let's go ahead and get an instance on points. Plug that here. Let's go ahead and get that uh, right here, the separate geometry, plug that into points. Shift A and get a uh, icosphere. Plug that into instance. And we're gonna plug that into the join geometry, which is gonna give us this. Let's go ahead and bring those subdivisions up and bring that radius right about here, making sure it's working correctly. But we're gonna add some variation in the size of these spheres. So let's go ahead and get another random value. And then keep it at default, plug it straight into scale, and then bring your max up and bring your min up to you know whatever you want it to be. And you can play with your scale to uh, get whatever variation that you want to have. But now we have this going on. We just need one more object, I mean, one more node, which is going to be a uh, transform. We're gonna plug that transform into the join geometry and plug the, uh, the grid into the geometry socket of the transform node. So that now we can go ahead and get the position to be below our object. So now that that plane is gonna be below it. In fact, I lied, we need to get a set shade smooth node. Set shade smooth right here. So that's gonna smooth that out. In fact, I lied twice. We need one more node that's gonna be duplicated, which is a set material node. Put that there, shift D, shift D. Now let's go ahead and get our placeholders for our material. So let's hunt over here, click new. And I'm gonna call this one base. I'm gonna call this one base. And we need to get another one called random. And so you can see how we have all these lines. So this line here with the transport represents this flat bottom here. So we're gonna click on base. The one with the instance on points, that's those spheres. So we're gonna go ahead and select random. And then over here, these wires, we're gonna also select base. So now if we go here to Eevee or the 
the uh, material preview. Let's click on base. Let's make it metallic, pretty cool, and make the base color slightly far down. And then here on random, uh, we're gonna make it metallic and keep the brightness all the way up. Okay, now we can head over to shading. Now what we're gonna be doing is something that is exclusive to cycles with the random node. So we're, I'm gonna go here over to cycles. I'm gonna hit the drop down and just get kind of a default HDRI. But if you just want to use Eevee, then you can skip this part and just work on the metallic material and add emission. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna go and uh, let's see, click on this material section. Let's click on base and let's get that base material looking good first. And all we need to do is add a, a color ramp and a noise texture. Now make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default, and hit Control T, move this to Object, and Noise Texture, move that to Factor. Bring that in, bring that in, Detail 12, Roughness up, and bring this up as well. So it's not super reflective. So now we have our base, and let's bring that to one that scale on the noise texture to one. Once we get lighting, we'll go back and edit these a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and select the random and we need to get in a mix shader. So let's get a mix shader right here. Get an emission node, plug that here. In fact, we're gonna bring that down here. And then let's get a color ramp and a noise texture. And we'll hit control T use the object, we'll delete the texture coordinate and get an object info. Now this is the most important part here, the object info node using the random socket, plugging the factor into the color ramp and the color ramp into the mix. And we're gonna go from linear to constant and watch this. We get random selections on the emission node. Right here on the emission, we're gonna go over here to a nice kind of warm tone, bring that brightness up. Now we have a nice warm tone here for these lights. And you can throw a layer weight on that if you want to give it some detail, but we're going to leave it, we're going to leave it here for now because it looks pretty good. Let's go back to layout and let's get our camera. So let's hit shift A, camera, control alt zero, snap it to view. And then I'm just going to rotate a little bit like this. And then let's go and get in our depth of field. So click on the camera here, go into the depth of field, and I'm gonna bring my f-stop all the way down so that I can really make sure my focus is proper. I wanna focus on this guy here. So that looks about right. And here in the flat view, you can actually turn on depth of field so that you can really hone in your depth of field without it being too intensive on your computer. Then I'm gonna bring back that f-stop and now we have that. Now we need to light it. So we're gonna to go to Polyhaven and I'm using the Peppermint Power Plant 2. I'm gonna link this in the description so you can use the exact HDRI that I'm using and I'm gonna download the 4K. Then what you'll do is I'm gonna pop back into render view. We're gonna to go to the uh, world icon, go color to environment texture open that and navigate to where you saved your HDRI. For me, it's right here. And now it is lighting my scene really nicely, but I wanna rotate it. So we're gonna go back to shading and then I'm gonna click this drop down arrow, go to scene world, scene lights, and then go from object to world. Then here is your HDRI. I'm gonna hit control T and then I'm gonna use the Z to rotate my HDRI. Now it's pretty, pretty computer intensive process, but, and then I wanna go back to the object right here on the uh, metal object. I'm gonna bring my roughness pretty far down to be something like this. So that's gonna really help it be, make it a better focal point. And then um, here on the HDRI, maybe down to like 0.8 on the brightness or maybe 0.5. That looks really nice, something like this. And then I'm gonna go back to geometry nodes and I'm gonna go to the random value on the uh, spheres, so let's see, curve, icosphere, and on the random value, I'm just gonna bring the max down a little bit so it's a little bit more tasteful on the size. And there we have our scene. And then right here, say on the random value, I'm gonna bring my seed 
around till I like it. And here we go. The materials definitely need some work. Maybe on this base texture, we'll go back to shading on the base and maybe make this a little bit more reflective. So bring this down and maybe bring this down. And now it's a little bit more reflective. Looks a little bit better, I think. You can have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, but this is it. And then maybe go back to the random and bring that strength down a little bit. Something like this, cool. All right, and that is pretty much how you do it. Let's go ahead and render this out and uh, call it a day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself 300 samples here and then on my light paths, just make everything one and render it out. All right, and here we have it, the final piece. It's awesome, it's really cool. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and strengthen my depth of field. All right, so I strengthened my depth of field and zoomed my camera a little bit more just to kind of give it that microscopic feel. So work on your lighting, work on your composition your materials, make it your own, but this is it. This is the design. Uh, go ahead and hit image, save as, or maybe even find a way to animate if you want to do that as well. But that is, that's it. I hope you guys liked it. Hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Don't forget to grab that 25% off linked in the description on Blender Market D3 Spring. See you guys in the next tutorial.